All right, this is the second piece of geometry, and I want to look at page 41. I'm hoping that the page is in between here. You have been able to figure out the, uh, all these proofs. This is kind of heavy, and just a reminder, these, this page and the next couple are probably the toughest ones. When you get into the last six of the course, it actually will get easier, okay? And uh, once you actually get the hang of this, this even the proofs and theorems part will get a little bit easier, okay? But this is still pretty new, and there's a lot of steps, and I know it can be confusing. And then when they throw a challenge one at us, it's like our brain just freezes up. We think, I can't do this. So let's kind of decode it. Um, there's a lot that's given. They want us to prove that AX is congruent to CY. So I want to put a question mark over those two. Somehow i got to get to proving those two are congruent. They gave me a clue here, though. <clears throat> they say, first, I want to prove that A... <clears throat> BD, which is this big triangle up here, is congruent to this big triangle. Let's see what they give us. AB is congruent to CD. So I'm going to mark it on here. AD, okay, is congruent to CB. So I'll do two marks there. <gasps> I think we only need one more step and we can prove these two triangles are congruent. Do you see that this triangle here and this triangle here share a side in common. Mm -hmm. Now, we, these are not right triangles, so we can't use uh, one of the LL or HA theorems. But we do have three sides congruent. Ah, I'll go ahead and give that to you. You knew that already, okay? So once we <clears throat> know that these are congruent, we're trying to prove that um, this triangle here, AXD, is congruent to this triangle right here. So let me just kind of outline this a little bit and this one. We're trying to prove that those two are congruent. Okay, well, let's see. What do we know? We didn't use this yet. AX is perpendicular to BD. Let's find it on our diagram. AX and BD. If they are perpendicular, then we know something about these angles right here. I should do it on that side. Okay? And same over here. This angle will be a right angle because these are perpendicular. And the reason for that is just definition, right? Perpendicular line segments. But because I, these are now right angles, don't forget to put an entire statement in there saying that this triangle is a right triangle and this is a right triangle by definition of right triangles, okay? So we first state that we have a right triangle, then we have to make another statement, including the fact that we do have these two triangles that are right triangles. Now that they are right triangles, um, do we have enough information to prove that they're congruent? Well, we do know that this side is congruent to this side, and that is the hypotenuse. That's good. We do know we're going to use the HA theorem. They tell us that in step uh, 7. It says use the HA theorem. So we need to find two angles that are congruent. Well... When we proved that these big angles here were congruent, do you notice that this angle and this angle here are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, right? And so these corresponding parts of these congruent triangles are congruent. And now those same angles are part of these smaller triangles. Okay, so now we're kind of ignoring the rest of that. And once we have these triangles congruent, then it's easy to get to this last step of saying that these corresponding parts, blah, blah, blah. All right, I'll let you finish it. So <clears throat> I didn't give you step by step what to do, but we kind of talked through the things that need to be included. All right. And uh, hopefully you can fill in the blanks now and finish that. 
One warning. I was looking ahead at the checkup. Oh, my word. Wow, what a doozy, okay? And <laughs> the, uh, there are one, two, three, four, five proofs, and they have a lot of steps, and they don't give a lot of clues. But think about what some of the um, theorems were that were used in this section, and that's mainly what's going to be emphasized, okay? And then when you get to the self-test, um, look at it in advance to know, okay, what definitions do I need to know? And uh, make sure that your uh, workbook is up to date with all the proofs and definitions and theorems. Review that. Know those well. Um, <clears throat> on page 46 uh, and, and on the back of the self-test, actually, it's a little bit easier, okay? I think the toughest part of this pace is this third checkup. Um, but do your best on it. And then uh, just comfort yourself in the fact that self-test won't be that hard. And actually, the PACE test um, is a lot like the self-test. They give some clues, and I don't think it's going to be as hard as you think, okay? So the hardest part is getting through this third section and finishing this third checkup. Good luck, and I think this will be our last video, and then we'll uh, see you when we get to the third phase.